Hey everybody, I want to do a quick primer on some basic electrical testing. I've heard some people replacing some parts that were absolutely unnecessary. Uh, sometimes people get bad recommendations. There are a couple of fundamental tests you could do to rule out a couple of things. So we're going to get started right here and it's going to start right at the battery. And it is going to be a five millimeter, I'm sorry, bring it in focus, five millimeter hex. If you work on a motorcycle, you should own a multimeter. Maybe not a high-end fluke, but you could even buy one of those piece of crap ones they have at Harbor Freight. I would never recommend one of those for mains voltage because I wouldn't want anybody getting killed. But for 12 volts on a motorcycle, the Harbor Freight one is, you know, okay to use uh, for working on a bike. If you're going through this because you knowingly left the key in the on position and the battery is dead, you're not troubleshooting anything. You already know the problem. The problem is the battery is dead, right? This is for a, a systemic problem. You're trying to find out what's going on. And obviously, uh, short of that, that you know that you haven't done anything like that, you want to check the battery voltage. This should be painfully obvious. And there's a positive and negative terminals, and you're going to check it on DC volts, right? Using alligator clips because I only have two hands. And we can see my battery has 13 volts, and that's absolutely fine. You know, it's just sitting here at rest. It's not charging. Uh, it's also not draining, which is good, right? So that's cool. It would stand to reason that if I turn the key to the on position, it would turn on the ignition, uh, the carburetor heaters, it would turn on the light up front, and the battery would start draining. So if I just click this on, and I go back and I look at this, we're going to watch the battery start going down. But if I sit on this, there it is draining. So eventually, if you were to walk away and, you know, forget to shut off your bike, this would keep going down and eventually your battery would die. This is a strong battery. It'll hold its own for a while, but eventually it will give in. Next up, I'm going to use two alligator clips so both hands are free. So this is the voltage of the battery with the bike off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the bike on, right? And the voltage is going to drop, and then I'm going to turn on the engine. And what's going to happen is, is that the voltage is going to increase in and around the point of the voltage regulator. The bike charges around 14 volts. And what should happen is, is the voltage regulator, which sits down here behind this pipe, this piece of chrome right here, right? At around 14, after around 14 volts should start dumping off voltage as heat, which is why it has so many uh, heat, heat fins on it, right? To blow off the extra voltage. And when I apply throttle to the bike, it should still maintain roughly that voltage, right? So let's see this happen now. So here the bike is off. And we can see I just turned on the ignition and the voltage is dropping. And now I'm going to turn on the bike. volts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give it some throttle and we'll watch what happens to the charging voltage. Regardless of the speed of the engine, regardless of the revolutions, the voltage is always maintained at in and around 14 volts. That could vary slightly from bike to bike, but that's roughly the gist of it, and that's the voltage that would be used to charge the battery. When you see that, you know that number one, the charging system is working, right, because the battery voltage is increasing when you hook the test leads up to it, as I have done. And number two, the fact that it hits that voltage and stays in that spot, regardless of the speed of the engine, tells you that the voltage regulator is working, right? And you don't need to replace the voltage regulator. There is, of course, another common issue that people have, and that is that all these things seem to work fine, but they come out the next morning, like they could drive all day, and, and the voltage is fine on the battery. They come out the next day, and the bike is dead and the voltage on the battery is dead, and, and it is suspected perhaps that uh, maybe the battery is failing, or in fact there is 
uh, something within the system of the motorcycle that's leaking and you need to check to see if there is a draw going on even when the bike is off. This is, uh, you have to be a little more careful with doing stuff like this. Uh, or at, at very bare minimum, at least on a motorcycle, in this case, at a bare minimum, you'll blow up your meter. But we're gonna, we're gonna talk about this now. The first thing you're gonna do is pull out that key. Pull out that key. And why do I say that? Because if you pull out the key, you can't turn the bike on, right? Don't shut it off. Pull the key out. Got it? Good. Unlike voltage that you read directly across, in order to do this, you have to actually break the circuit. So I'm going to have to disconnect the circuit right here, and I'm going to put the meter in between. On meters like this, before we do this, before we cause any calamity, especially on my meter, we're gonna leave the common alone, right? But we're going to move voltage, and always start first. You don't know what you're dealing with yet. Always start the one that's rated for the highest fuse. Mine happens to be 10 amps. So go to 10 amps, and I'm gonna move it to the amp setting. Now I'm going to break the circuit. Uh, something to be said about this on motorcycles. I'm going to uh, discuss this here. If you have a lot of connections connected directly to the battery and you break the circuit in such a manner as to sever these connections, you can see right here I got my lights connected and there's uh, two separate grounds, you can actually break the connection that's causing the problem. With the ground disconnected, I've preserved all of those connections by clamping it to the alligator clip on this side. This is the ground side disconnected from the battery. It now goes all the way through the meter, back out the meter to the red side, and now the red side clamps to the battery. So the battery is now in circuit, in series, with what used to be a direct connection. We can see as far as amps go, it's showing nothing at all. Now, I happen to have some lights that I could test this out with, so let's take a look. It shows a change of 30 milliamps. And now I shut it off and it goes back to zero. Now, while I would never recommend anybody does this, and I'm saying that you should never do this, I'm just going to display how much current flows when the bike is engaged in the on position, but not running, right? So I'm gonna put the key in. Don't ever do this. You're responsible if you do. Right, so we can see almost, almost six amps right so there we go it's a lot of current and you figure most of that is coming from the uh, light bulb up front here figure if you left this bike in the on position and walked away six times 12 is 72 watts of power is being consumed as the bike just sits there and that battery is not going to last a long time uh, delivering that kind of power just uh, sitting there in a parking lot or what have you and that's why when you leave this thing running and I, the headlights the main culprit on these bikes right there's no fuel injection system there's some carb heaters and and there's an ignition but the headlight is the killer that's why these things happen and it's really not good for these lead acid batteries to go full empty so after a couple times that happening there's there's some uh what's like a like a sulfur buildup that builds up on the uh elements inside there and it never really comes back to what it used to be so eventually as that happens subsequently you, you never get what you used to get out of them and you have to replace the battery you could still uh see the voltage that you would expect to see but it doesn't uh, last as long that means it, it, it can't hold as much of a charge not as much amp hours right that may not be as evident as one would you know as, as other possible problems it would have a voltage right it would show a good voltage but the second you would hit the starter, that voltage would drop all the way down to like four volts. Like there'd be nothing behind it at all. So you would go and you'd hook your voltmeter up and you'd see that everything looked good. And then you would hit the starter and then it was, there was just nothing behind it. So if you turn on your bike and hit your starter and you hear nothing but clicking, that's, that's a pretty sure sign that, that your battery is dead, right? A weak battery will also manifest itself by, you know, the motorcycle barely turning over. But we could also, observe the uh, cranking voltage of of a bike right so here we have the bike sitting here and the ignition is on and let's watch it it only dropped down to uh the low 11s for just a second and popped right back up batteries going weak may drop down to eight or nine volts uh as you watch it uh try and turn the engine over may barely get it over 
And as it turns, the engine may not be enough to uh, turn the engine and supply power to the ignition. So this is something to consider too. I think the biggest takeaway is knowing the health of the battery, knowing if your charging system is working, and knowing if your voltage regulator is working from this video, and not replacing these things if they're working fine. There are a lot of things that could go wrong on this bike, and systemic troubleshooting will uh, usually uh, reveal these problems to you without going and spending money needlessly on swapping parts or taking bad advice from people who just throw out suggestions as to what the problem might be. For the sake of completeness, it's worth pointing out that if the charging system fails while you're on the road, that the LCD display and the speedometer will start to fail before the ignition will. So when you're driving, you'll notice that the speedometer will start to move like this and go down to zero, and the LCD display will start to go blank. And this is an indication that the battery is not charging. And it's, and it's depleting as you're going down the road. And what's going to happen is eventually the bike is just gonna uh, uh, start to uh, misfire and eventually die. Now we've seen in a previous movie, it happened to actually be a fuse. So it would be a good idea, <laughs> I'm gonna add to this, to pull over and check that the signal fuse uh, in the back cover down here is actually good. But short of that, uh, if the fuse is good, uh, check the voltage because when that starts happening when you're on the road it's a telltale sign that something terrible is about to happen with your charging system I'll also point out that uh, in the future I'm also going to be adding on just a voltmeter right here off of this uh, an indicator on this side that will just show me that the voltage is working and the charging system is working and everything's fine all in one indicator I hope you found this uh, video on the quick troubleshooting of the voltage regulator and battery and charging system of the V-Star 1100 helpful. Thanks for watching.